Hello everyone, welcome back to my assignment video for session seven. Um, in this session, you're going to have a quiz uh, on reliability and validity, uh, which you studied last week. Uh, the, as always, the hard copy is available in course materials, and if you have, and you have two chances to take it, as always, um, make sure you take advantage of the quiz discussion board <laughs> at some point after you take the hard copy, after you take the first uh, online version, or never. <laughs> um, you also need to continue reading in Popham 2017, Chapter 6. Uh, that's on the Selected Response Test. And Shapui, Stiggins, Shapui, and Arter 2012. Uh, that is also on creating Selected Response Tests. So these are very important for this week's and this session's and next session's assignments. Um, there is a discussion board this week on posting your four or five learning targets. Uh, I, would th I would prefer that you did four, but I know there are um, people that will do five. Um, and you're gonna, those learning targets are going to be centered on your questions for the select response test on the EdTPA Elementary Education Assessment Handbook. So some of you are thinking, what do I do this selected response test on? Math? English? No, you do it on the EdTPA's Elementary Education Assessment Handbook. Um, I've also made the initial selected response test discussion board available where you're going to upload a copy of your test. And that's it. That's all you're going to do. You're going to upload a copy of your test. Uh, you're not going to dis that's not a discussion board uh, you're just going to upload a copy so your classmates can your group mates can download a copy and take it and you're going to they're going to post it in another discussion board um, which I've also made available so um, where you give feedback and you take the test and, and post your answers um, this discussion board will be open for a week uh, I know it's a modified discussion board rubric which says uh, if you post up to seven days you you get um, you will get uh, an A credit A credit um, but that's it it's it's you you I'm only having open for weeks because that's all you're doing is creating your uh, targets and then you're going to comment on your classmates targets um, and uh, it's due uh, on Sun. It's due on Sunday, um, but I'm not going to close it. That's why I just say it's due on Sunday. Um, the longer you take to to post those and get feedback on them, or if you don't do it at all, um, you're going to lose a little bit of credit. It's not worth a lot. I think it's worth about one percent of your grade. Um, but uh, you will not get feedback, and it will affect. Uh, the grade you get on your selected response test, which is a pretty, uh, it's a lot of weight. Okay, we're going to be, begin our performance task by becoming familiar with the EdTPA Elementary Education Handbook. And note the way I've referenced the EdTPA in this, uh, in my teaching written, uh, the written version of my teaching memo. Because um, many of you will cite it wrong when you do your three-part analytic summary. Uh, so make sure you get that right. Um, I would recommend looking at task one, uh, the planning for assessment part, and task three, assessing learning and the five rubrics that make up that section. Um, and I've listed those five, uh, five ru or six rubrics here. Uh, rubric five, which is planning assessments to monitor and support student learning. And then rubric 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, which you can see the names of them. So this is just a suggestion, not mandatory. You'll see um, the exemplar test that I've listed, um, where you should, which you should look at to get suggestions for learning targets, questions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These these exemplars are on the EdTPA Special Education, which is what I used to have. Uh, you create a test for, but now I'm doing the EdTPA special uh, elementary education. So, um, but you still can get an idea of what I expect by looking at those tests. 
Um, what I find out, what I find what's most important about the rubrics is the differences between a score of two and three, uh, which is passing, a three is passing, and the difference between a three and four, a four is a score you would need to offset any score of two that you may get. So I believe that technical aspects of the EdTPA, such as the three tasks, how many videos, permissions you need, etc., etc. To me, those aren't big ideas because you're going to have to know these anyway when you submit your work. So to me, what's more important is the nuances between rubric levels. Um, but again, I, as I said, that's not mandatory. You can do your test on how many uh, videos can you have, how long does this have to be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Where who do you get permission from? Uh, and so that's up to you. But again, um, it's going to be hard to make reasoning questions on those types of information. That's knowledge information. The most difficult task my students have had in previous semesters is creating the four or five learning targets on which to base their questions. Targets need to be specific and measurable. You need to avoid things like students will understand. That's too vague. Students will be familiar with. Too vague. Um, so uh, I have provided resources for you to do this. If you look in ancillary materials, no, if, I'm sorry, if you look in course materials, uh, selected response test uh, material, you'll find everything you need. You find in my video, you'll find uh, exemplar uh, tests, you'll find how to write good learning targets, good learning objectives. So everything you need is there. Um, uh, the more I become familiar with the EdTPA, the more I believe we need to be aware of the nuances of the rubric. Uh, that's what people struggle with when they take it, and, and that's why they fail it. Um, I've also found that students have an aversion to creating reasoning targets and questions. I challenge you to read Chapui et al., page 139, Wiggins, many of you have already read the Wiggins article, and uh, Brookhart article, which is also in, I believe that's in the selective response test materials. So be sure to use the verbs for the learning targets that I provide in course materials. Avoid using understand, will be familiar with. It, avoid those, those are not specific and measurable. Okay, here's a sample question that I have here uh, that's, that's a higher order thinking question that is a reasoning question. Um, to receive a level four on rubric 12, which one of the following would make more sense? And then there are four choices. So you can see that the answer can't be gleaned from searching for the correct answer in the ATPA handbook. Instead, you must make an inference based on your understanding of the nuances of the rubric. There are other sample reasoning questions in the exemplars in session seven course materials. Um, as you begin to create your selective response test, be aware of the selective response test rubric. And you can click on it here in the, um, the written portion of these, this teaching memo. Uh, and it outlines all the requirements. You will have a chance to revise your test before submitting it to me for grading. So take advantage of the feedback you will receive from me and from your classmates. So you're gonna get feedback on your first draft before you get graded on your final draft. So, um, so you're going. To, the process is going to be a first draft feedback, second draft. You get feedback from your your classmates, but not me on the second draft. Uh, then you submit it for grading. So um, everybody should be able to get an A on this. Unfortunately, they don't. Um, people usually don't change their initial. I mean, some people do. Uh, but many people don't change their initial draft. It's like, I've done it. I'm, I'm done with that. And it really affects your grade. Uh, okay, so there's plenty of read to read this session, along with Chapui et al., chapters four and five. Um, there's Popham, uh, chapter six. Uh, and there are materials and course materials and some formative assessment ideas in ancillary materials. So. Um, those are just extra stuff for you to download and use uh, 
uh, or watch and to use because it's good formative assessment practice. So that's it for this week. Spring starts tomorrow when life up north is renewed, even though it still feels like winter. I just went for a short walk. It was 30 degrees and still a little chilly. Um, and I'll be closing my bird feeders soon. Um, I'm on my last bag of sunflower seeds. <laughs> so that's it. Good luck.